Hello, I'm Channing, and I'm here with my friend, Matt Abreu, and we're in front of his wonderful Wandering Railroad. Tell us more about it. Uh, we started it in 2017. The first show we went to was October of 2019. It's roughly 38 feet long and about 10 feet wide. Um, it's a figure eight with a point to point. What made you, uh, inspired you to do this? Um, I was tired of spending hours and hours on my hands and knees setting up modular layouts and thought there had been a better way to bring trains to the public, um, into the hobby, without spending hours of setting up time. And everything in this is almost made by you, right? Scratch made? And Me and my dad, and there were about four different hobbyists um, that were good at either building trestles, doing rock work that we brought in that were masters of that particular trade to do that aspect of it. But it was about six people that built the whole thing. And where, how many shows have you been to? So far, I would say we've been to about eight shows. Um, the issue was we finished it, like I said, in October of 19, and then March of 20 is when COVID hit, and every show basically got shut down for two years, so that put a big hiatus in going to shows. But luckily now, it's starting to pick back up again. And would you say, uh, what, what era is this modeling? late 18s, early 1900s. It's all narrow gauge. Um, I'm not doing 120 true narrow gauge because the engines are just too big and too wide. So most of the stuff saw 122, 124, LGB, USA, Bachman, and a little bit of AccuCraft. Are you planning any uh, changes, more, more features? No, there's some, the animation aspects, like my guitar guy playing the guitar, the crane that's lifting the weight, my stone cutter, um, just animation things things to keep people interested in walking around um, to keep their attention more than just the trains. The trains are background to the scenery and the detail. Because I was going more for the whole diorama aspect with seven different diorama windows, showcases versus one layout that you could stand in one corner and look all the way across right. it. And you did all the interior, all the wood. Yep, all, all the wood. The we, did, we did a custom steel platform here where the train actually sits on and then we had to do a false ceiling to get rid of the curve of the trailer and make it flat but all that was welded in place so you actually have a rigid base that the layout itself is sitting on and you're powered through okay. i have one i have one landline chore power cord um takes a 15 amp service so any of your residential house household outlets it can plug into um and that runs like you can see it running across the floor right here. It's one cord and that powers the lights, the trains, all the animation and everything else. And are you uh, looking for more shows to bring it to? We're always open. Um, if somebody wants to come to us with shows or with ideas, we're open to train shows. We're also open to children's hospitals, veterans homes. We're okay with the one day setup because we can be set up and running in 15, 20 minutes, unlike the two or three hours that it takes a modular layout to set up. We, we want to do a show a month if everything works out perfect, but right now it should be six or eight a year is what we're doing. Um, do you have a favorite part of this? I would say my favorite part's building it. The challenge of figuring out how to make it not disintegrate as you're going down the road and the challenges because there aren't any YouTube books or videos. There aren't any how-to books of building a layout in a trailer. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of building a layout on a four by eight sheet of plywood, but there's nothing on how to make it go down the road and not disintegrate. So that was the first challenge. And I guess the reward of that challenge is having 6,000 miles underneath the trailer tires of going to shows and minor issues Yeah, is, minor. is the biggest i'm not gonna say there's no issues because I, there's a figure right there that's laying down as i'm looking at him um but overall it's holding up great we decided with the help of joel bragdon with bragdon enterprises who was the creator of the geodesic foam scenery concept after being asked several times how we built the trailer, 
Um, so we built a kind of a step-by-step mock-up of how all the track is self-supported on a wood base that is separate from all the scenery. And then we do the hard shell type material and then the rocks are a resin casted and then it's the step-by-step of the washes on how we painted it. So there's actually a void under all that track and the track and the scenery are two separate um, entities that just work together also to allow for movement while going down the road. And if you like that, souvenirs. Yep. Well, it's, it's always a pleasure to see it. It's always a pleasure talking to you guys. And you guys have a website for it? We are on Instagram and Facebook under Wandering RR, so you can check us out there or WanderingRR at Yahoo.com. We'll put that email to get a hold of us. We'll put that in the link. And thank you again, Matt. And also thanks thank to your, you. thanks to Jerry. Yep. Yeah, you, both of you do a wonderful work with this, and I think everybody loves to see it. Yeah, it's a joy everywhere we go. Everybody has nothing but great things to say about it. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, and we hope you like the video and subscribe. Thanks. Thank you.